The Kundalini energy causes every single one of your 100 trillion plus cells to experience an orgasmic energy. Why do you think the Buddha could sit under a tree for nine hours without moving? It's because he felt so good. He was in such nirvana, he was in such samadhi, he was in such a state of devikut, if you want to call that, call it that, that the idea of moving didn't even cross his mind. He was in ecstasy. He was in literal ecstasy, ladies and gentlemen. Until an individual experiences Christ consciousness, which is just a fancy name for Gnosis. Gnosis is just a Gnostic term for uh, enlightenment. Enlightenment is Kundalini. Until the average individual experiences this, they'll never really be able to see that you know, although sex is great, it, it, com it compares nothing to, it compares in no way, shape, or form to the, the way the body feels when you have the kundalini energy moving through you. See, you see, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. God designed us, the true living God, not the demon pretending to be a God out here, but the true living God that the Gnostics refer to, We'll talk more about that in the near future. I'm gonna make a video about the monad, and I'm gonna make a video about the pleroma, and the aeons, and the demiurge, and Yaldabaoth, and all the Gnostic stuff, so bear with me. But um, the true living God, ladies and gentlemen, can be attained, or we can communicate with this force through the awakened Kundalini, because the awakened Kundalini brings us to the Christ energy, ladies and gentlemen, and through the Christ energy, we know God. This is all stuff that goes on in our mind and our body. Hope that makes sense. But God designed us, ladies and gentlemen, and depending on how you look at it from a Gnostic perspective, there's multiple different ways you can look at this. I have my own unique way of looking at it because I'm not just someone who follows typical Gnosticism. I've created my own system of Gnosticism, and Gnosis is what Gnosticism is about, ladies and gentlemen, and Gnosis is divine uh, attainment, if you will. That's a kind of a simplified way of explaining it, but it, it, Gnosis is achieving enlightenment. Enlightenment is Kundalini. Gnosticism is a religion about Kundalini. But God put within our system, ladies and gentlemen, a telephone system, if you want to call it that, that can connect us to it, to God. Now we're down here in the underworld where the matrix is everywhere. The matrix has snuffed out our ability to realize that we have this telephone system within us. This telephone system is the kundalini energy. The kundalini energy, which is a female force to a large extent, awakens, causes the energy to rise, the kundalini energy to rise through our spine, which is the phone. When the energy gets to the head, you attain something known as Christ consciousness or Heru beheaded. This is when all of the pylons or chakras, the true churches of God are awakened and now your head, you, you are connected to the absolute, you are connected to the monad, you are connected to the angelic kingdom and the pleroma, the realm of light. You now see the world through Christ's eyes, ladies and gentlemen. We have the ability to awaken this energy within us. For years I've been trying to figure out why it stays dormant within us. For years, I've been trying to figure out a way to ignite this energy and keep it ignited. I have some certain methods that I've developed that I believe are pretty foolproof on how to awaken this energy, but they're relatively dangerous due to specific substances involved, due to certain practices involved, and I can't talk about it here on YouTube. Maybe I'll put it out on BitChute, I'm not sure. Unfortunately, because of how programmed we are here in the Matrix, we've got to resort to some semi-harsh kind of uh, technologies, if you want to call them that, to, you know, like a, a knife hitting flint to create a spark to ignite this energy. A lot of people will tell you that Kundalini cannot be forcibly awakened and that only God can awaken it. I don't believe that's true. I believe we are co-creators with God and that God wants us to seek the true kingdom and seeking the true kingdom can only be attained, at least in my opinion, through the awakening of this energy because until you experience the full expression of these chakra churches, until you experience the Anakian kingdom and all these angelic realms, in my opinion, you'll never really know the... Uh, You'll never know the true potential that your body and your mind harbors. And when you don't 
even for a brief second. How would I explain it? When you look at reality through the through the eyes of Christ consciousness, you are literally looking through the eye. When you experience reality through the eyes of Christ consciousness, which is the fully aroused Kundalini, you experience reality in the same fashion that Christ did. You see the truth, and until people can see the truth, what good is all this scripture and all this other stuff? Unless you're using it as a seeking process, or you know. Unless you're using it to try to apply those principles, you're, you're better off literally, in my opinion, instead of reading your Bible. You're better off, ladies and gentlemen, reading the Nag Hammadi scriptures that came out of Nag Hammadi, Egypt. Those are even bastardized now as well, unfortunately, but there's a lot of gems in there. There's a lot of Gnostic gems in the Nag Hammadi scriptures. What's the name of the... I'll put a link in the description box if I remember to the exact book that you should buy. It's about 556 pages. But reading that and reading the Essene Gospel of Peace book one through book four. The Essene Gospel of Peace, ladies and gentlemen, is a book that I like to talk about often. And although I don't agree fully with everything that Christ talked about in that book, those books, excuse me, there is so much treasure there. And what I really like about the Essene Gospel of Peace is it's an instruction manual. Christ is telling people how to heal themselves in that book, in those books. But you can take on the role of one of the people that Christ is teaching, and you can interact with that book in a very special way. I've gotten a lot out of those books. I've read them in altered states of consciousness, which I really think that you can... Uh, that's one, you, you wanna get a lot out of your scripture, ladies and gentlemen, and this goes against the grain with modern Christianity and religion is in general, but if you wanna get more out of your scripture, if you wanna get more out of your studies, if you will, reading your books while in an altered state of consciousness can be very beneficial. And I'm not talking about getting drunk and being an idiot. There are certain shamanic substances out there that are very profound, that allow you to see past the normal conditioning mechanisms of your intellect. You've got to get your common sense back. It's besides the point I'm not recommending anything and I'm not going to name any substances in this video, but I mean, put the, put the dots together for yourself. Be creative. Read these books and become them is what I'm getting at. Don't just read them and go, I remember this. I remember that. I'm going to get together with my church group and we're going to talk about the scripture. These people don't look well many of the time. I've, I mean, I've gone to churches and seen the people and they might be able to, you know, recite the Bible, but a lot of them don't, they look crippled. They look broken. And I don't know if it's all the magnesium that I've consumed. I don't know if it's all the iodine of which I just took a relatively large dose before I came out here some nascent iodine and some lugals mixed together. We'll talk about that formulation in the near future, but uh, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, but I am gonna say that it's gotten to the point where I can just obviously smell the stench of fear on everybody, and this is just an absolute joke, and in many ways, shapes, and forms, modern religion is has crippled people. It has not helped us, ladies and gentlemen. It has not helped us. I don't need to hear any of your bullshit and any of your modern Christianity sympathizing and all your crap about Catholicism, you name it. Modern Christianity, which is a perpetuation of like medieval Christianity, Catholicism, all of this stuff, what has it done for the country? What has it done for you? Because any religion where you're... Re you <laughs> God, excuse me, you guys. Any religion that inspires people or leads people astray to not walk the path, that's not worth a damn. And it's not even necessarily that modern Christianity or your Bibles are designed to lead you astray. It's that you're trapped in your intellect. You're trapped in your memory. You're trapped in your programmed mind. Mind. You don't have any perceptual fluidity. Your common sense is gone out the window. And because of that, you read these books and you don't apply what you read. Most people, when they read the Bible, they just go, okay, I'm gonna be a good person for now. Uh, from now on, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna try to live my life better. Christ, ladies and gentlemen, 
didn't come to unify people. He came to divide. Christ came. Christ was a, a war weapon, ladies and gentlemen. Christ will take your body and your mind and dismantle it down beyond, it will, it will reduce you beyond zero so that you can rebuild yourself properly. Christ is the kundalini energy when it's express, when it reaches the head, ladies and gentlemen. The Egyptians referred to this as the Uran uh, Heru beheaded. When the kundalini energy gets in the head, it gets back into the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. You now see reality from the head. You're out of hell. Hell is the pelvic floor where the kundalini is asleep. Because the kundalini has fallen from grace, you know, Lucifer, Satan falling down into hell. Thank you.